Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we are talking about my favorite class of automobile, original and unrestored. This is a 1975 Maserati Kempson with uh, less than 20,000 miles on it. That's like 500 miles a year. Original paint, original engine, original everything. Sadly, the car does not belong to me. It belongs to my buddy Doug Magnet. Doug, come on in here. Doug owns the Riverside International Automobile Museum. He is our Maserati guru here in Southern California. He's the guy to go to when you want Maserati parts and information. And this is his automobile. Tell us about it. It's a 1975 Maserati Kampson uh, from uh, an era when uh, very swoopy, uh, exotic looking cars kind of coming out of the aviation space age era in, in design. Now this was designed by Marcello Gandini, correct? Absolutely, at Bertoni Design. We were fortunate enough to have uh, Mr. Gandini here at the garage one time. He designed the Mura, the Espada, the Countach, legendary Italian designer. Started at like age 26, I think, when he did the Mura. So you can see his influence, very clean. Uh, this is the original paint? Original paint on yeah. most of it. Okay. Uh, so, so what do we have? 4.9 liter, four wheel disc brakes. Yes, you have uh, 4.9 liter all alloy V8 quad cam, so there are four cams. Um, Weber carbureted, uh, four two-barrel Weber DCNFs, uh, produces for its era quite a bit of horsepower. Now we did a uh, book review, our friend Mark Sonnery. Yes. He wrote the definitive, or certainly one of the definitive books on uh, Citroën Maserati. This yes. car was built under the auspices of Citroën when they were still owned by Citroën. So consequently, it has a lot of Citroën features in it that I find uh, fascinating. Uh, the hydraulic clutch, the mm -hmm. power brake, power steering, extremely comfortable seats. So Part of that marriage also included <clears throat> the driver's side seat adjustment is hydraulically actuated okay. uh, for the uh, up and down movement. Uh, the power steering is Citroen. Uh, of course, you mentioned the brakes, um, the headlight bucket lifts. Um, so turning on the, up the headlights and turning on the headlights is a hydraulic switch that you lift up and they're uh, moved up actu uh, and actuated hydraulically. And I will probably say this a couple more times in this video. This is not a sports car per se. It is a grand yeah. touring car, which means it is extremely comfortable. Everything works, air conditioning, but it handles like a sports car, but technically it's not a sports car. And when people say they want a sports car, what they really want is a grand touring car because your wife won't yell at you, <laughs> you know, when it, oh, it bounces, it's too hard, the, my hair's blowing all over. You don't get any of that with this car. You know, so that's the nice thing about it. Uh, now this car is, I remember when these came to the United States originally in 75, they were kind of ugly. You've, you've got what, the European trim and look on this one? Absolutely, it, uh, unfortunately the Kampson received some of the worst treatment ever suffered uh, on a North American homologation for bumper standards, uh, causing the uh, rear taillights to go where the bumper is. The bumper then went underneath the Well, let's start the, the front sure. end, tell us here. Well, now, originally this had just a big, goofy... Big steel uh, with two uh, sort of triangular pontoons out in front. Yeah. Big rubber baby bumper, bumper car, car looking car thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now this is the way it would have appeared in Europe. European trim here with right. the European lights inset. Very simple, very elegantly designed and mm -hmm. incorporated into the overall look of the car. Very nice. Uh, we'll look at the back in a minute, but let's, uh, can we open the hood? I'm anxious Absolutely. to see the motor. Well, there is the classic Maserati four cam engine. You know, so many cars have four cams now and four valves per cylinder. This is a two valve, correct? Two valve per two cylinder. Valve. But uh, in 1975, that's about as exotic as it got. Mm -hmm. And uh, 300 horsepower or 320? Uh, 320, 330 in tr European trim maximum okay. output. You know, it's interesting. Uh, this is the first time we've opened the hood on this car that I've seen. And I can spot the uh, Citroen parts. This is Citroen. Yeah. Power steering is Citroen. Uh, well, that's Citroen over there as well. Although, I guess anything green is Citroen, isn't it? Does Absolutely. Does he use the same Citroen fluid? Even the fluid is green. Okay, even the green often, fluid. Oh, here it is right here. Often he, referred to as frog juice. Yeah, fro frog juice. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure there's an insult there somewhere. But it, <laughs> and, of course, my favorite. Look at those Webers. Oh, there's nothing like Weber carburetors. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, of course, this is, it doesn't get more Italian than this mat. Yes. The quilt uh, finish. Quilt finish here. I used to love, uh, there were some Ferraris in the period, did the back yes. deck in this. I always thought that was very sexy. You've got a functioning hood scoop here as well. 
twin fans, obviously thermostatic. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty well laid out. There's your fuel filter and everything right there. It looks like it's reasonably accessible. Unlike today's motors, everything you, you can get to pretty readily. Yeah, yeah, except the water pump, right? Yeah, the water pump takes uh, getting the, removing the uh, steering rack. have to uh, move the rack. steering rack mm -hmm. to get to the water pump. And like Citroen, it has a self-centering steering as well, Correct. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Cool, let's move to the back of the car and see what other changes are there. There's your famous Bertone emblem right there. Those tires seem, were those tires that big in 75? Uh, they would have been Michelin XWXs. Yes, yeah. they're, they're in that uh, size range. And these are, is this American, this mirror, or is that European as well? The mirrors uh, generally were not put on the cars at the factory. Right. And so, uh, and often didn't come on to the cars till uh, they were absolutely required. These car, these mirrors are unique to this car, but I have a period photos of the, of the car back in the day with those exact mirrors. This looks like, you can see some uh, Gandini. The Spada has this. In my Spada, you open this, and that's where the gas goes. On the passenger side, there is a fuel flap. Right, OK. Let's come around the back of the car. This is probably one of the most dramatic places where they've uh, cleaned up the rear end. The US version of this looked horrible, didn't it? Tell Abs us what was wrong. Absolutely, and it frustrated uh, Maserati and Marcello Gandini immensely. Uh, the first thing the DOT told uh, the uh, Maserati regarding the importation of the car was that the taillights were not allowed to be inset into the plexiglass. And they, oh. just, they just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> and Mar Maserati tried to argue it eventually acquiesced. And they had to move the, the taillights where the current bumper is, where the European bumper is. Yeah. Then that necessitated the bumper to be put down lower where the exhaust is, a big, massive, ugly, rubber, baby buggy bumper yeah. kind of thing. And then uh, the exhaust had to be, <coughs> resonators had to be flipped to lower those down. And uh, it just became a, a design that had no function or purpose. Uh, right. Well, this layout. is much cleaner. And this is another Gandini signature piece. The Espada has this. And so many companies have comp uh, copied it. I think the, was it the Honda CRX, I think, they, mm -hmm. yes. I think they might have had a similar piece like this. And of course, this rear hatch opens. Can you open that yeah. up? Let's see. Surprisingly practical car. There's a lot of room in it. I say that for those of you that are trying to convince a spouse, no, honey, really, I mean, you know, this would be good. We can go places and, no, no, we can take trips and do stuff. But you actually can get quite a few things in there. What's in here? Is this battery? Uh, this is a tool kit on oh, this tool side. tool kit, okay. And like most Italian cars of the period, these tend to wear out. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But the nice thing is this car is all original. Full spare tire down there? Full spare. Don't get that anymore. Actually, yeah, up in the front. Actually, it is a narrow spare. Huh? Oh, it, it is, is a okay. narrow spare. Cool exhaust. As I mentioned before, your gas cap is here. What do you? Oh, there you, oh, there you are, right there. And cool. You know, it's interesting. You realize what an artist Gandini is. Look at this shape of this window. Now, it almost you almost you just take it for granted. You go, oh, okay. But you know, sit with a pencil and design the rear window of a car yourself. I am not a designer. I couldn't do it. I couldn't make it that elegant. This sweeping curve here, it's just, and, it, and it, it, it sort of, it's curved. You know, it's not easy to do. I mean, that's what designers do. They make it look easy. This looks like a car somebody just sketched. Oh, pure design. But it's not until you sit down, you all the little details like this, that, ri that window as well. But doors open nice and wide. Uh, the back is hilarious. Oh, that's the funniest <laughs> rear seats I've ever seen. This is the, one of the best examples of 70s styling I've seen because a lot of 70s cars just, they were trying to meet federal regulations. It just didn't work. Whereas this is just, and what else I like? All the little stickers over here. This looks like some factory sticker. Vettura, what does that say? Vettura in Rodaggio. What does that mean? I'm not really quite sure. Well, there you go. Whatever it is, it sounds cool. The tourist Whatever car. Whatever it is. Rodaggio, I'm not sure. Yeah, but you know, it's all those little things that make the car original and unrestored. That's what's cool. This car has been well maintained for, God, almost 40 years. Yeah. And why would you only drive this car 500 miles a year for 40 years? It doesn't make any sense, but I'm glad somebody did. And I'm glad you're the right guy to save it. What kind of shape was it in when you got it? Was it... Uh, 
Uh, pretty much we've just uh, maintained it and detailed yeah. it and uh, done a little touch up here and there and did the bumper conversions. Uh, we did re some work on right. the seal in the water pump and yeah. very little work done to it. And these are pretty bulletproof engines. In, mm -hmm. in that sense, they're almost like American V8s. This is probably the most American of the European V8s in the sense that they're low uh, RPM redline, torquey at the bottom. I'm anxious to take it for a ride. Can we take it for a ride? Absolutely. Let's do it. Very torquey V8. Feels like a Mustang that went to college in Europe, you know? It's got, uh, it's got a big V8, it's got a five-speed. And for 1975, there's a lot of power. A lot of younger guys might not know that uh, the mid-70s were dark days for performance cars. This was one of the few bright lights. Uh, this would have been considered an extremely powerful car in 1975. What was the horsepower on it? Uh, pushing up toward uh, uh, 300 horsepower. 300 horsepower was a lot, especially for a European car in the mid-70s. Even the Porsche Turbo was what, 250, I think? Something like that, if I'm not mistaken. In your trim, they would come out, uh, yeah. detail out to th up to 330 horsepower. Yeah. Sight lines are good. And of course, that great Maserati sound. You can still feel some of the Citroën influences. When I first got in this car, I pressed the clutch down. I got, oh my God, it took a lot of force to push the clutch down. It's a pretty heavy clutch. Then of course, as soon as we started, the uh, hydraulics came into effect and, and all of a sudden, boom, it was like, uh, touching it with your toe. Same thing with the brake. Just a very light touch. The rear seats in this thing are hysterical. I mean, I, I think they're there just for insurance purposes. You can say, oh no, it's a four-seater. I don't know who would sit back. I mean, I don't know who would, no one could sit back there. Very sophisticated engine for 1975, four cam, all alloy, 4.9 liters, 300 horse, and you said, what, 320 in European trim. This car's got a nice patina to it. The gears are nicely lapped in. There's a bit of a throw, but I like that. It, When you put your foot in it, you feel that Maserati heritage. It's not a classic 70s dashboard layout. The Countach, your spotter, they all have these similar sort of flat panels. Tachometer here, oil pressure, water temperature, speedometer, and miles per hour. This is an American model, obviously. Air conditioning vents all over the place, and the air conditioning really works. Oil temperature, voltmeter, and of course clock, and you got your real 70s radio. That's uh, that's what people would put in, you know. To, that was the aftermarket replacement that was better than the factory radio. They don't really do that anymore. Everything's an integrated system. But probably my least favorite thing of this car would be this big pad here. Uh, this is pre-airbag. Don't forget. So that's kind of what you had to do. That's the way they did it. It's not terrible, but it doesn't seem very Italian. I, I like a thin wheel, a wooden wheel, but by 1975, the feds were starting to encroach and everything. And you couldn't have that kind of stuff anymore, but it's okay. It'll probably save your life. Like an American V8, the red line's about 5,500, right? Yes, that's correct. You know, I can't get over how comfortable these seats are. This is a car you get in and you drive to San Francisco, or maybe you go to Vegas. The air conditioning is Italian or American? Uh, American compressor, Italian oh, uh, okay. other components. Yeah, that's, yeah. Very reliable. Italian air conditioning is. Uh, <laughs> no. Modern supercars are so wide to me, that new Lamborghini Aventador, it's a nice car, but my God, it's so wide, it takes up the whole lane. I like the size of this. This really is the definition of a grand touring car. Extremely comfortable seats, power brake, just touch it, power clutch, or I guess, what do you 
say power. Would you say power? Or Hydraulically power? assisted. Yes. Yeah, it's power clutch. Uh, power steering. Very light. Very light touch. Light feel. It's not the kind of car that's going to beat you up or wear you out. But you know, we've only been in third gear running around here. Let's take it up on the freeway and uh, drop it in the fifth and see what she cruises at. Fifth gear at 60 miles an hour, turning to what, 2,600 RPM, something yes. like that. Nice big V8, understressed. Wonderful cruising car. Now, truth be told, a lot of supercars in this era are a real chore to drive, but this is very relaxed. And the air conditioning works. Wow, what a treat to drive in an original unrestored car exactly as it came from the factory. Uh, be sure to check out the uh, Riverside International Auto Museum in Riverside, California. Uh, what's the website? Uh, www.riversideinternational.org. Yeah, very cool. We're going to take our cameras down there one day and do a piece, but like I said, if you get down there before I do, uh, let us know. Point it on the comment section. Doug, thank you very much. What thank a treat you, this was. I hope you enjoyed your ride in this Maserati as much as I did. So, what does what Casman mean again? Campson is uh, Campson. one of the winds that blows in the Mediterranean area. That's right. It's a wind that blows in the Mediterranean area. I don't know why. <laughs> Lamborghini's got bulls. Maserati's got wind. I don't yeah. know why they do it. But as I said, extremely original, rare car, unusual color. Uh, has all the elements to be a collector car and still reasonably priced. So if you find one of these, and they're fairly easy to work on, aren't they? Uh, yeah, reasonably easy. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, so we'll uh, see you guys next week. Thanks.